Good morning, Oasis City family. It's good to be together today again. Palm Sunday, Hosanna. Come on, God save us, God help us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I am super pumped uh, about just worshiping together and hopefully soon being together uh, in person. In fact, uh, we are anticipating in-person gatherings, limited size, seating, and limitations to do with COVID, but we can still be together. There's something important about the gathering of uh, the church uh, on Easter Sunday, next week on Sunday. And so uh, more information is going to come out. In fact, after this service is over, you should be able to go online and sign up. I want to say a big thank you to all of our teams and all of our uh, video teams and our production teams and everybody who's serving behind the scenes, those who are building the Easter at home activity kits for the kids. Hopefully your children have those. And uh, hopefully uh, if you've not got one yet, you would just go online and sign up right now uh, to, uh, well, wait till after the service. Sign up and make sure your kids get in on the fun. They can go back and do the activities uh, with YouTube after the fact, but remember, City Kids TV every Sunday morning at 9.15. As I was thinking about this Sunday, and I've been praying into this Sunday, and what do you have to say, Lord? What in the story of the triumphal entry um, do you want to highlight for our church and for uh, us as a family here? And how are you um, speaking in this, in this moment in time? And you know, we, we think about the palm branches and the praise. I know that's the highlight of our, of our, you know, of our, of our week, of the praise and worship together. We think about Hosanna and the highest people laying down their coats and, and their palm branches and, and creating a carpet, a runway, a red carpet for the Savior to come in. And you know, when we worship Jesus with all of our might, when we start to truly worship him, and we, that's where he loves to be. He inhabits praises. And so uh, when you hear that verse, God inhabits the praises of his people, his chosen, um, you, you really have to think about it this way, that he loves to like recline and put his feet up and just bask in praise. And so if we want um, to welcome the Lord, we welcome him with praise. Hosanna, we identify our need. Hosanna, God save us. God help us. We are beyond saving ourselves. We're not going to do this in our own strength. We want the strength of the Lord today. Somebody come on, say amen. Um, Mark chapter 11 talks about the triumphal entry. And I just want to read our verses this morning as we go. Would you take your Bibles out? I hope you have your notebook and your pen, your Bible. Um, remember, when we come back in person, we want to make sure to bring our note pen, our pen, and our Bible. Come on, listen, let's read together. Mark chapter 11 says this. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage, and to Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. And he said to them, go into the village opposite you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, which no one has sat on. No one's used it. No one's ridden it. Loose it and bring it to me. And if anyone says to you, what, why are you doing this? I want you to say to them, the Lord has need of it. Would you just say, come on, say the Lord has need of it. Come on. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found a colt tied by the door outside the street and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said, hey, hey, what are you doing? It's coming like, see these two guys coming up to take a bike. You know, <laughs> what are you doing? That's not your bike. That's not your colt. What are you doing? And loosing that colt. And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let him go, just like Jesus said they would. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes over its back, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna. Can you say that with me? Come on, say, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. And so when he had looked all around at all the things as the hour is already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. As I was praying into this message, 
the Lord kind of highlighted the idea of this cult that had never been sat on, this cult that had never been ridden, and that Jesus chose a cult that had never been ridden. And, and I know there's all kinds of um, important uh, information around that and reasons and significance and symbolism and all of that stuff. But this is what the Lord highlighted for Oasis City 2021 Palm Sunday. Jesus is in the business of using things that have never been used before to carry out his purpose. I'm going to say that again. Jesus is in the business of using things that had never been used before to carry out his his business, to carry out his purpose. Come on, somebody put your hand on your heart and say, oh God, reveal your purpose for me, to me. I'm telling you this morning, friends, that if we come to the conclusion that the only way to our destination is using something that we've always, always used, we are going to miss out on the new thing that God is wanting to do. If we look back into history hoping to find our destiny, we are always going to be frustrated in the end. If we look into how things were done so that we could know how to do it, and I know we can't, we, listen, we are building off of someone else's work. We are always standing on the shoulders of the generation before us. We are always benefiting from the hard work and ethics of the people who handed out blessing before us. Generations that went on before, pioneers who broke the land for the first time, people who developed waterways for the first time, people who innovated for the first time. We're benefactors, we're beneficiaries, I mean, beneficiaries of that kind of blessing that was handed down. And though we honor the past, and we look back, we look at the past in Oasis City, we honor the past, but we don't stay there because God is about to do something powerful. He's about to do something new in this time. I believe very strongly that this um, worldwide COVID thing has cause an acceleration of the purposes and the revelation of what God wants to do in this next season. In fact, I, I believe that it's never been more evident that if we are going to move out of this pandemic with strength and authority and vision as the body of Christ, we are going to need to be prepared to use something that has never been used before in order to carry out the purposes of God. We are losing... Um, uh, the, the sense of dependency or dependence on the things of the past. And we are saying God is doing a new thing. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse uh, 18 says this, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness. He's going to make a roadway through COVID. Come on. And rivers in the desert. There are so many of us that have gone dry as the body because we haven't had our normal way of gathering and drinking water. We've, we've lost those times of corporate worship. And even some of you I know have found it difficult to stay engaged. Some of you have been like, Online's not the same, or I, I, I just don't seem to want to do it. And I'm telling you, it's never been more difficult to feed ourselves a balanced diet, and it's never had more access to more outlets of content at the same time. So then why are we dry? Why are we dry? Here's, here's what I'm going to say. Maybe you're not. Maybe there's some of you watching today. You're in the best position you've ever been in. But I'll tell you right now. Uh, as a leader in the house of God, this has been a dry season of struggle, of pioneering and breaking new ground, of developing new systems, of creating new ideas, of trying to hold on and learn to feed ourselves things we weren't used to doing before. We are growing accustomed to a new diet. Listen, a few years ago, um, many of you who have been a part of our church for any given time would know that I have been on a bit of a health journey. Um, that's a mix of the healing power of Jesus and also losing weight. And so um, 
One of the things that I had to develop was a taste for sparkling water with no added sweeteners, no artificial sweeteners, and to the point where now when I drink carbonated water or a flavored uh, carbonated wa water with no calories and no artificial sweeteners, to me it has replaced um, Coca-Cola. It's replaced that. In fact, when I try to have a Coke, and anybody who's known me for a long time knows I used to love to drink Coke, and so um, when I drink that now, it's almost too sweet. But after being out of that for a while um, and actually learning to see the value in this other kind of beverage to hydrate with and to enjoy, um, now I enjoy it, um, I would say, even more than I ever did uh, sweet and pop. And so, so what happened is I grew to be able to handle a taste of a new delivery system for something to bring me water. But when COVID hit and restrictions came on the church, many, many, many people got angry or said, we'll just wait. Some people took a hiatus. Some people said, you know, I, I tried watching online, but it doesn't sound very good. It's not, it's not the same thing. And maybe they didn't join a Zoom group or an online home group. And for some reason, there's been a disconnect because if we couldn't access it, we weren't going to replace it. But guess what? I've learned to enjoy our online moments. Now, they're not the same as being together. We know that. But we ha I had to make a choice. How was I going to feed myself and how was I going to stay connected to the body? And so I made that choice. There's kind of this uh, word that we've been feeling in the, in the air around our body is that around the, the body of Christ at Oasis City is that it's almost like if you've ever fasted from food before, if you've ever fasted, um, there's a time when you're really hungry and then when you break through, it becomes easier. And actually, if people starve, eventually they can lose, like we, we had one of our kids at one point, uh, a baby in, in their infancy was uh, resisting food. And as they resisted food, it would become harder and harder to get them to enjoy food. And so um, what happens is that those hunger pains go away. Maybe at first you were like, I can't wait till we get back. I'm just going to hold off. I'm not going to watch online. We'll be back soon. Maybe you were angry and you just said, I'm just angry. I don't know why this is happening. And for whatever reason, maybe the hunger pains have gone away. The pangs have gone away. It's almost like an atrophy. If you've ever injured your body and you've been on, uh, you know, orders not to put weight on something. Over time, uh, muscular breakdown can happen if you don't rehabilitate that, uh, that part of your body. Some of you heard me talking about really injuring my ankle in January and how I couldn't run. And that, anybody who knows me knows I love to run quite a bit. And I've got good news for you in the last couple weeks. In the last week, I was able to do two 10Ks back on my feet again and, and minimal pain. But boy, am I feeling it in other areas that I didn't run. I didn't, I, I'm just out of shape. And so, so here's the thing. Has an atrophy taken place? Have you, have you lost your hunger? Have you lost your, your, um, your fitness level? Have you lost that with the passion for the presence of God because something changed? Because something you were used to was no longer available? God's saying, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing. Do not remember the former things. We need to look back, back and say, we honor the past, but we're not going to stay there. We honor the past, we're not going to stay there. We honor the past, but we're not going to stay there. We need to move forward, even though it might look a little bit different. Jesus is in the business of using things that have never been used before in order to get his purpose accomplished in us, through us, through his body on earth, the church. Come on, somebody say amen. One of the things we can get ready for, are you ready for this? New methods. There's going to be new methods. We are absolutely going to have to gather. We're going to have to figure this out. And it, I believe that we will get back to freedom of meeting and all of those things. But in the meantime, um, we might have to meet when we have restrictions and space and size and only this many people in the building. In fact, I think Easter will probably only have 50 people per service. We'll have multiple services. But one of the things we have to get used to is a new method. But I'll tell you right now that the essence of what we're accomplishing is a gathering, which is important. It's important to not forsake gathering together. The message doesn't change. We honor the message that is timeless, but the method has to. We were not online a year ago. Well, I guess just over a year ago when they locked us down for COVID, our church was not online and that first week we did everything we could to land there and we've been there ever since. For our church, online 
and video and worship video and preaching video is a new thing that Oasis had never ridden before. God knows how to use something that's never been used in the life of a church to take that church to the next level. Our kids ministry, we are now online with that. We've got our kids, City Kids TV at 9.15 and, and now we're sending out these, these activity or subscription boxes that match the stuff that's online. That's a new method for us. That's a new method. We never did that before. And Lord willing, we're gonna to continue to do that because it's a way to engage on other times other than just for an hour on Sunday. New methods. This is one of the things, we new systems. We're gonna to have to expect new systems. How many of you did the growth track? Come on. <laughs> that was an amazing uh, way that we were able to connect with new people and we're back to doing that again. If you haven't finished, you can get on it. But guess what? It's almost like we're calling people to a re-up um, because there's gonna be a slightly different system as we navigate the turbulence of the next season knowing that maybe we're going to have to do things in a system or a way. We've talked about new methods, but we're gonna to have to talk about new systems. Methods are one thing, but how do we create a structure that maybe is a little different than we've been used to? God knows how to use that. I believe he's doing a new thing. In fact, I want you to look me right, no, look right in my eyes. I believe that the best days for Oasis City are ahead of us, they're not behind us. And if you are looking to be involved in a group of people and with a body of believers in the couch and valley that have a destiny in their eyes, that know that their best days are ahead, that the best is yet to come for us, that we are about to step into our finest hours, then you found home. You found home. He's all about making things new. He's about improving those things. You know, we find sometimes that people in the church are struggling with change, struggling with um, losing what they were familiar with. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny that the same people that might struggle with change would also love to renovate their kitchen. It's funny that the same people that struggle with change when it comes to their church would also be very happy if somebody would redo the floors in their house or paint the walls or refinish the exterior of their home. It's funny um, that people who struggle with change might love a promotion with added income, even if it means added responsibility in their career. But what about if God's calling us to elevate as a church along with added responsibility for his purpose? for the kingdom of God's purpose. Well, I believe this is going to be a season where we're going to be able to rise to a new level of blessing. Come on, somebody say blessing. God bless Oasis City. God bless this couch and valley. God bless this. I believe we're stepping up. We pray God send revivals, cause a reviving to happen inside the lives of people who at one time walk, maybe you're watching today, and at one time you walk strong with Jesus. One time you were passionate for the Lord. You studied your Bible. You trusted the word of God and you were filled with the Holy Spirit. But over time you've leaked and you've walked away and you've compromised and you've lost your hunger and maybe a little spiritual atrophy or apathy has broken in. Well, I want to encourage you today. There's good news. Leave that past behind. This I do know, forgetting those things which are behind, I press on toward the high calling that God has on my life. This is what we've been called to do, modeled by the apostles. <laughs> You're not alone. Everybody goes through those highs and lows, those valleys and those mountaintops. Everybody struggles. But we need to be ready that when God calls us to a new level, we are ready to go. And also that as we rise for revival or as we rise from exponential growth or we rise for impact around the world or we rise for whatever God calls as a church to rise, the people in the body of Christ are also going to be called up a level. And even, you know, here's the thing, like I said, you might be comfortable receiving a promotion with higher income and higher responsibility in your career. But could I ask you this question uh, today, if you're watching this and you are a follower of Jesus, would you take on more blessing and more effectiveness and more of your destiny, even if it meant more responsibility? 
Some of you say, uh, no, I don't want more responsibility. Eh, wrong answer. Whatever you need to do to change that answer today, whatever God needs to do in your heart, say, God, whatever you need to do to change my heart so that I am not shy, I am not afraid of responsibility in your kingdom. Oh God, do it in me today. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Come on, put your hands on your heart right now. Do a new thing in me today, Lord. Do a fresh thing in me. I don't want to live on old bread. I don't want to live on old stuff, old wine. Lord, I want new. I want to be filled afresh today. Come on, just take a minute and do that on this Palm Sunday where they said, Hosanna, oh God, save us. Oh God, help us. Hosanna, Hosanna, come deliver us. And we as a church at Oasis City say, oh God, deliver us. Oh God, save us. Oh God, take us to something fresh. Oh God, do a new thing and reveal to us how we're going to help along the way, how we are going to co with you, Jesus, how we are going to be answering the commission, the, the mission with you, Jesus, that you would just show us where those unused, unridden things, unproven things that you're calling us to do to walk out our purpose, that Oasis City would be ready to go, yes, sir, we'll go get that colt and untie it and we will use it. Even if the people watching us do it don't understand. You know, sometimes I think people see Oasis City as a church that's constantly pushing ahead. And guess what? We are. Even if people don't understand, there's a fire that burns in us for those who are far from God. Because I know something. The people who don't know Jesus, and this is one of the things that's been on my heart since church is closed. I feel like sometimes, yes, it's important for the believers to be together. It's super important. Lindsay and I can't wait to put our arms around you and to squeeze the life out of you. Ah, come on, give you a big hug. We can't wait to see you face to face and cheer you on and listen to your voices and listen to you praise God and hear your testimonies of what the great things God's done in this last season. We can't wait to have public baptisms and big weddings and funerals and celebrations of life. We can't wait for that stuff. We just can't wait. But there's another part, there's a parallel stream for us that we feel that God's heart for those who are far from him, those lost, those who are lost. And I'm telling you right now, when you get a hold and get a heart for the lost coins and the lost sons and the lost sheep that we read about in the New Testament, if you hear that, when you get a hold of a heart for lost things, you capture the heart of the Father. And Oasis City has a heart for the lost things, for lost people, people who are far from God, and our purpose is to help them get close to God. So whatever we do as we come back together, we're not just looking to reminisce about times of old. We're looking to bring our neighbors to the house of the Lord, to bring our friends to the house of the Lord. Even today, share this message if you think it would encourage somebody who's got a little bit, you know, lost their hunger pangs for the presence of God, lost their hunger pain, lost their, they've atrophied. Share that. I hope this fires you up today to know this. What we need now is fresh fire. We need fresh oil. Come on. We need a fresh move of God. A move of God that is uncompared to anything that's ever happened before. Isaiah the prophet said, the words of the Lord God speaking, behold, I do a new thing. And it's going to spring forth. It's going to spring forth. Come on, somebody say, it's going to spring forth. It's going to cause roadways in the wilderness pathways that we can get through this this un impassable time and rivers in the desert places where there should be no water god's going to use these things that have never been used before in these times that have never been used before in this political system that's just seems to be coming down i believe god is going to get beyond all of our politics and all of our economies and everything else and do a new thing through his body that is like bringing rivers to the desert and putting roadways in the wilderness we're going to have to be ready for new methods. Unridden, unproven. <laughs> new systems. Valuable. A way to connect with people. A way to help people to find their purpose, to find freedom. <laughs> Discover their destinies and make a difference. Yeah. And I believe God's going to call us to a new level of commitment. I really do think that. You know, we read the story about the cult that had never been ridden before. 
I love the fact that he sent two of his disciples to go do a job that seemed a little weird, and yet they were prepared to step out and to do it. You know, there's going to be times we're going to do things as a church that I'm sure you're going to be like, we've never done it this way before. But would you be one of those two disciples who would say, let's go, let's go, let's go. Today on this Palm Sunday, I really, really believe that the word of the Lord is this. He's in the business. He says to you, I'm able to use things that have never been used. Here, here's the thing. I've been talking about the church, but let's just talk about you for a minute. Are there areas of your life that you have yet to find breakthrough because you've been trying to utilize something else? Uh, somebody else's system, somebody else's? Listen, God has a perfect empowerment and anointing for you that fits like a good pair of shoes fit you. If Lindsay tries to run in my shoes, it's gonna be a clumsy, clumsy disaster. Why? Because her feet are a different size. They can go places mine can't fit. I'm telling you right now, there's things that, that Lindsay can, when we fly, she can sit and be comfortable in an airplane. Sometimes I can't even find enough space to breathe. Just because she's smaller doesn't mean she doesn't have a purpose. Doesn't mean she doesn't have freedoms. Doesn't mean she doesn't have authority in certain areas. What I'm using that as a, an illustration to say that if I try to fit into her shoes, it's going to squeeze us. Ah, I won't be able to do them up. I'll probably break them. <laughs> Guess what? Oasis City should not try to fit into small shoes. Come on. Oasis City is not going to fit into small shoes. Oasis City has a big destiny on us. We have a destiny on us that we need to fulfill in God's power and his authority. And stop apologizing. Come on. Just put those big things on and run, Oasis. And the same thing with you. Maybe you've been trying to do it in a system, trying to run in a pair of shoes that was too small or too big. Listen, God's word is not limited. In fact, when we learn according to his word, to hear the voice of the spirit of God confirming his word, when we are walking in the authority and the grace of God, I'm telling you right now, you can be assured of this, that he knows how to put the right size shoes on the right size anointing, the right size feet, the right size, so that you can run with the word, so you can run with authority and run with destiny. But maybe you've been trying to fulfill the vision and purpose in your life and in a way that God goes, no, no, have you thought of this? Have you thought of this idea? Well, that uh, you, that's never been done before. I, I've never done that. I've, I've, maybe you need to go back and upgrade your education. Well, I, I always felt stupid in school, so no, that, that couldn't, maybe you do need to go back now and stop listening to the lies and realize God can get you through. Maybe you need to go out and get a job if you've been afraid to apply because you've been turned down so much. Now's your day to go change your economic system. Listen, some of you are waiting to do it with a budget and you've never had a budget. In fact, you've declared to your friends, we don't need a budget. We just, we just do this and this. Listen, some of you need to step up and try a different system that's never been done that way before. And you might be the first person in as long as you know extended family, the first person in your line to stay married, the first person in your home or your family history to get an education, the first person in your home to exercise and to make a priority out of being healthy, the first person to go to Bible college, the first person, I don't know what it is, but I do believe that God wants to do a new thing in you, not just in our church. Because as the church, God is doing new things. He's revealing new things. He's going to also be doing it in the lives of the people who make up that church. It'll be in our collective DNA. A threshold for going to untie unridden colts so that Jesus can use us however he wants. I can remember praying praise prayers like this. Oh God, use me. Show me where to go and I'll go. Tell me what to say and I'll say it. Be king of my life, come on. And if you're here today and you say, you know what, I'm ready to do something new. I'm ready to finally, once and for all, give my life to Jesus. That new thing that will take place in that moment starts a new life. Could I pray with you? If that's you today, say, I need to give my life to Jesus. Or maybe you want to get right with the Lord. Come on, just pray with me. Jesus, come into my life. Oh, Jesus, be king of my life. Thank you for coming to my rescue. Thank you for coming to earth. Thank you for living a sinless life and dying on a cross, but rising again. Forgive my sins. I choose today to follow you. 
Fill me with your spirit and make me brand new. I don't just want to have a new moment. I want a new life. If you prayed that prayer today, we'd love to help you with some next steps. Take a minute, fill out a contact card on our website, oasiscity.ca, and we would just love to get in touch with you. And for the rest of you, remember, he's doing a new thing. Come on, he's doing a new thing. He's used to using things he's, we've never used before, where nobody's ridden, <laughs> to get him where he wants us to be, to get his message to where it needs to go, to carry the kingdom. Amen. I hope this encourages you as much as it's encouraged me. And uh, happy Palm Sunday. Be blessed today.